Good morning, church family. Pastor Brett here. And to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. I read a book once called God is the Gospel. The basic idea of this book is that when we are saved as Christians, we get a whole lot of blessings and resources from heaven. But that God himself is the greatest gift. See, salvation brings a lot of blessings, and we preach and teach on this all the time. Blessings such as forgiveness of sins, peace of mind, a clear conscience, a fresh start, a sense of belonging, purpose, the constant presence of the Holy Spirit, heaven, and eternal rewards that we can enjoy. And the Bible is full of these blessings. I think sometimes we forget about them. We don't focus on them in the rough and tumble of life as we're seeking to survive one day at a time. But I think it's good for us to get them out of the back of our mind to be more than just theories. But I think there's a worse response to the blessings. Not just that we might forget about them, but that we might actually make the blessings themselves the focus. We as followers get to enjoy Jesus' presence, but sometimes we think that his presence is only for the benefit of our lives. But salvation is all about restoring relationship. Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden because of sin, and we as followers of Jesus get to reconnect with God because of salvation. And that is the point. God himself is the gospel. Whenever we seek the blessings instead of God, we diminish the gospel and God. There is a reality for us where God can be one with his people, where we can enjoy intimate relationship with him, like Adam and Eve did, walking with him in the garden. We get a chance to walk with him and talk with him. Listen to how Jesus describes it in John's Gospel. John 17, verse 20, and this is the prayer he's praying just toward the end of his ministry. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, may they be in us, so the world will believe you sent me. I love this prayer because it's one of the very interesting places where Jesus actually mentions us. I pray for those who will believe in me through the disciples' message. That is us. Jesus foresaw a whole family of people that would believe in him, that would follow him because of the disciples' message, and that is us. And listen to his prayer that those who believe in him would be one, not just one together. He's not just talking about unity here. He is talking about an essence, one with us, Jesus is saying, as the Son and the Father are one, that we might be together with them as one also. The glory of the Father and the Son, perfected in this holy unity of Trinity, the fullness of the glory of God wrapped up in the divine persons, and we become a part of that. That's Jesus' goal for us that we might be entwined so intimately with the glory of God that we are inseparable from him. He in us, we in him. That is the goal of faith. That is the goal of salvation. Not a smooth life with nice possessions and good health and streets of gold at the end. No, it's being at one with God himself. Experienced in part now, but fully in eternity. That's the prize. And it's all made possible through the death and resurrection 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is the gospel. Let's pray. Lord, what a beautiful gift you have given us to be able to call you Father, to belong to the kingdom of heaven, and to have the peace that comes from knowing eternity is laid out, kept ready just for us, where we get to enjoy the fullness of you without sin or burden. That is the gospel. And we thank you so much for that. And that you, you send us your Holy Spirit as a deposit of what is coming. That we can feel your presence with us even though we haven't finished our walk on earth yet. Thank you for the beautiful gift. We are really sorry that we don't pay as much attention to it as we should. And I pray, Lord, that as we turn our heart to you today and our mind is dwelling on you, that you would actually fill us that we would know your presence. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep walking with God. Keep talking with him. Be prepared to listen as he speaks back to you through reading the word. And if he does speak, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others. And we'll see you soon.